Hey, this is Luke from BassGorilla.com, and today we're checking out this brand new plugin called Beatdown by Sonic Fraction. So Beatdown is designed for creating incredible drums and glitching them up in all kinds of ways that you never even imagined. Let's check out this very simple beat that I've made. And this is just using a drum kit called EDM1. And if you're in the global tab, you can click here and you'll see that we have 43 different drum kits that we can choose from. So I'm gonna go through them and you're gonna hear, this is tech one. We can use this select dial here to cycle through them. And of course you can tweak each individual cell if you want in the sample tab and we'll take a look at that in just a minute but what I wanted to show you to begin with was the global tab and the way that you can select different drum kits here. So the best place to start is usually the global tab. I'm going to go back to the original kit, the EDM1 kit, I really like the sound of this one. We also have this tune function in the global tab which basically changes the tuning of each cell of our 16 cells here. Reset that back to zero. What I've done now is clicked on the reverse button in the global shell, and you can hear that all of our samples are being played in reverse. I'm just going to click that button again, and we're back. So you can have a lot of fun with this instrument, just even within the global shell. Within the global tab, you see we have here the filter controls, frequency modulation and ring modulation. So let's play with some of those. That's a low pass. We have band pass, high pass. And notch. We can control the filter frequency and the resonance. Frequency modulation. Let's go with a different waveform. Change the tuning of it. Ring modulation. So if you have something like an APC40 or Ableton Push and you map all these parameters to different dials within that MIDI controller, you're going to have a lot of fun with this device. Next up on the envelope tab, you can see that we have A, D, N, S, and R controls that we can assign to the amplitude, filter, or the pitch. So for example, if I bring the filter frequency down, go into the filter tab, bring the amount right up, you can see that we have this real nice minimal techno style sound right now. Bring that back up. We can do the same with the pitch. And that's acting on each of these 16 cells because it's within the global tab. And the same with the amplitude. That's the velocity sensitivity. So you can get some really nice sounds that way. I'm just going to set that back to zero. Next up we have this LFO window and you'll see that you can change the rate either randomly in terms of hertz or synchronized. And we can assign this to the amplitude. can assign it to the filter. And we can assign it to pitch. You can choose different waveforms for the LFO. You can also choose whether to activate re-trigger or not. We also have a compressor. Bring up the ratio, bring down the threshold. 
go into power mode. I'm starting to clip there, so I'll deactivate that. We have shaper controls. The amount and the type. And then sense to reverb and delay. And within the FX tab, you're able to control the settings of those reverb and delay times, but uh, I'm not gonna get into that just yet. So that's a look at the global tab. Next, we're gonna take a look at the sample tab. So I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so looking at the sample tab, you see that we have all the same controls as the global tab. We have filter, FM, ring modulation, envelopes, LFO, and FX, compressor, shaper, and sense in the sample tab. But the main difference is in the sample editor, which is not present in the global mode, in the global tab. So what we have here in the sample editor is the ability to switch out different samples for each individual cell. So for example, Cell one is our kick one. We're on EDM kick one, kick one. But I can swap that out for, for example, house kick one. Or any other kick ones from different drum kits. I'm gonna go back to EDM one, kick one. And let's take a look at this sound here. You can hear this is a tonal sound. And what we can actually do is a lot of stuff with this. So I'm gonna demonstrate what we can do with an individual cell in the sample tab, just using the sample editor. First of all, we can select different sounds there. If we want to, I'm gonna go back to 22. If you click on user, you'll be able to switch out this sample for one of your own. And there's gonna be a tutorial by the guys at Sonic Fraction explaining how to do that. I'm gonna go back to factory. And what we can do is looking at the waveform, I can click my mouse cursor. I can click on loop here. And now it's looping the whole sample, but if I click and drag, I can select the start point and end points of the loop. And with really short loops, it becomes more tonal. So you could do this with a hi-hat or a cymbal or any other non-tonal sound or atonal sound and get some very interesting tonal sounds from it. So right now we have this sound and if I want, I can reverse it. I can synchronize the loop. And you can see I can adjust in real time. Okay, so this is good, this tuning. And now we can apply effects. So I've just brought down the filter frequency a little bit. It's on the low pass filter. find a triangle. And let's use the LFO. So I'm just gonna use the LFO on that particular sample. So that's just affecting cell number 15, which is the percussive, percussive tone we have. So if you've ever been to a club where they play minimal techno, you hear a sound like this evolve and evolve over a long, long time, probably even half an hour sometimes. And this device would make that a whole lot of fun and very, very easy to do. So 
really really interesting and very fun to play with so that's a look at the sample tab next we're going to take a look at the mixer tab you see that we have 16 cells here on the left and we can control them each individually so you can control the level of them for example cell number 15 I can control the level of it I can solo it I can mute it I can control the decay and the reverb sense as well and the panning just of that individual cell so this is a great way that you can mix down your drums with lots of control right here within the actual device itself next up we have the LFO tab and you'll see here we have LFO1 on the left and LFO1 2 on the right and what we can do with these LFOs is assign them to all of these different parameters and what these are are lots of different parameters for each individual cell so you see we have C1 select, C1 loop end, C1 FM and then it goes to all the cell 1's, C1 means cell 1, into cell 2 and then we have the same controls for that so let's apply that to the loop end of cell 15 so we just find C15 loop end which is here So that's very interesting. What's happening is if you look in the sample window, you can actually see graphically that the endpoint of our loop is changing because of what LFO1 is doing to it. And at very short loop lengths, you get some very interesting higher pitched tones. So now we can use LFO2 independently and we can assign that to something different. Okay, we're back and this time we're taking a look at the FX tab, which is a lot of fun. And I've just gone into the actual MIDI clip and added a couple of other notes in. So we've got now this sound and this and you'll be able to hear them now. So first thing I'm gonna do before going into the effects is I'm gonna go into the mixer and for cells 13 and 14, I'm just gonna assign some decay. The reason why I wanted to do that is to show you in the effects tab we can control the time the feedback amount and the dry wet same with reverb we can control the dry wet the time and the room size. But the real fun comes in the next window along, which is the FX window. And we have these eight different effects here. Just listen to the crazy glitchy sounds that you get just by turning some of these dials. This is the beat buffer. Filter sweep. Redux wobble. Climax.
Beat with it. Metal, my favorite. Pitch repeat. And ring modulation. Okay, moving to the right of that, we have the master EQ. So you can control the gain of the low band. the mid band and the high band and then you can, you can also control the cutoff points or the crossover points of the low to mid band and the mid to high band so for example if I bring the mid bands if I turn the mid and high bands off This dial controls the frequency of the low mid crossover point. We can control the slew rate of that with 24 and 48 there. So I'm just going to activate the others right now and we're back. Next up we have saturation. So you want to use very, very subtle amounts of that. And then finally we have the bus compressor, which I believe is using Ableton's glue compressor. So we have the attack time, the release time, the ratio, threshold. Clipping, soft clip, power mode, and dry wet. So lots of control that you get over the entire device using the effects tab. I especially like the effects window here, second from the left. Okay, so the presets tab, you'll see that we have three different boxes here, presets, user, and morph. So let's go through them one by one. With the presets tab, you'll see that it says initial to begin with, and we can se select from all of these different presets. So let's go with, let's try reclusive. I really like the way that sounds. So what I can do with that, if I really like reclusive, I can assign that to one of these 60 different user positions here. And you see we have these dots. Now what these enable us to do is save a preset to one of the dots. And the way to do that is simply by clicking on shift and click it and you'll see that it turns blue. So now that that's saved, what we can do if we want is click on the little disk icon in the bottom left corner of the device and what that will allow us to do is actually save this instance of Beatdown with our user presets already saved. So I'm just going to call this Beatdown January 15th, for example. And we can continue. So let's try another preset. This time I'm going to go with Situate. And what we can do is just keep going through them. Here's a verbatim or verbatim. And again, if we click on one of these user dots, hold shift and click on it. 
now this preset has been assigned to that user dot and we can go back to it anytime. You can also go back into the, clo the global tab and select any of these kits, for example this one. And now we can hold shift and click on the third dot. And if we really like this one here, what we can do is click on position one. Just click on that number one there on our morph matrix. And we can go through and find other ones such as hoop loop here. Say if we like the sound of hoop loop, then we can assign that to morph position two. Glitch stitch, we'll assign that to position three. And Blue Man's Pipe, we'll assign that to four. And I think I'll assign Night Drive to position one. And now we have this morph matrix and you'll see what we're able to do is basically click anywhere on that morph matrix to get a combination of those four different presets. So this is mostly one, with some sounds coming through from positions two, three, and four. So just clicking these crosshairs in a very slightly different position can get some very interestingly different results. So that's an overview of Beatdown by Sonic Faction. I think this is an incredibly powerful device and it will help you to create all kinds of different drum sounds that you never even expected. And most importantly, it's a hell of a lot of fun to play with. So thank you for watching this and I look forward to seeing you again soon.